broadcasting from the heart of communist East Vancouver. This is the resistance. This is the Dry Shave Show. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Byron Bertram. And I'm Ivan Penaluna. And on tonight's episode, Bannon pulls on fuck mask. So this is the big story. Unfortunately, we didn't get to cover this last week, but this week we're, we're covering it. It's the fact that Steve Bannon has now left the White House. And I don't mean to burst anybody's bubble, but with that, ladies and gentlemen, the MAGA dream is dead. Any revolution that people voted for last November in the hope that Trump would drain the swamp, etc., is now dead. I would suggest that the... The administration has now been compromised. It is now in the hands of globalist forces, hence the exit of Steve Bannon. And more recently, just this week, Sebastian Gorka also left. Now, Sebastian Gorka and Steve Bannon, they all both sing from the same hymn sheet. They both follow this anti-globalist agenda. So there's no reason to think, I mean, what you've got now is got a, a White House full of people like Jared Kushner and Ivanka Trump. You've got Rex Tillerson, who's the ex-head of ExxonMobil. I mean, this is just basically a deep state government now. Uh, yeah, so what, So Bannon, yeah, you're sad he's gone, obviously, I'm, right? I, you know what? I was initially really sad that Bannon had left. But then upon reflection, within about 24 hours, I just thought, you know what? And he made a couple of statements that were very, very telling. Um, I thought, you know what? He's probably better off outside of the White House. He's been in the White House now for a good uh, six, seven months. And he's obviously been part of a administration that's under siege. Now, with Bannon outside, and Bannon, in his own words, said, listen, I've got my hands back on my weapons. I feel fucking jacked. Let's go out and kill some motherfuckers. He did that last <laughs> bit is me. Did he actually say that? He didn't say, let's go out and kill some motherfuckers. <laughs> but he did say, I've got my hands back on my weapons. I feel jacked. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, for How did he look? Did he still look like a hungover fucking private investigator? Yeah, he, he basically looked like a hungover a private investigator from Oklahoma. Did he, did he still look like a guy who pisses in the t- sink with dishes still in it? <laughs> he, just, he, he never changes. He still looked like he handed out soy sauce packages to trick-or-treaters? <laughs> <laughs> I, these are, I wish I could take credit for these, but these are from the take wall it. of Kevin Fox. Uh, anyway, so yeah. So, he actually, yeah, he basically made these statements, and... Um, Preceding his departure, he spoke to a White House insider, a reporter, who said, um, they tweeted out that Bannon said that winter is coming. So he said that he was going to leave the White House, and from this point on, he is going to wage war against the enemies of the Trump administration. And nobody knows better than Steve Bannon who those enemies are and where to hit them. Well, he's like, is he like the little finger of the White House? I, th- I think he's the little finger. Yeah, yeah. I think he is the little finger. He's like, Donald Trump, I know who your real enemies are. I don't think he's quite as Machiavellian and, and divisive as uh, little finger. No. I think he's pretty much, you know, I lay out my table, these, these are my cards, and, you know, he plays them. Right. I don't, think he's, I, I don't think he's a Machiavellian political figure. Right. You know, who plays people and fi- finally, you know, works out balances, you know, who's this, who should I say this to this person, that person. No, 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 that's, you know. He's like, Donald, I've always been on your side. He's the guy who turns up at at CPAC and says stuff like, you know what? They ain't going to give you your country back easy. We're going to have to have a a long, hard fight against the globalists. Mm. He's the guy who talks in that language that people people like us can understand. Right, right, right. You know, and it's ironic, really. You've got all the left. And now they're now basically, I mean, the deep state democratic remorers who f- swim along with the deep state and gobble up all the little bits of power that they can hand out to them they're quite on board with all of this they're like going uh, you know oh no it's it, it's okay this is re- this is this is awesome this is great you know no issue whatsoever <coughs> steve bannon he's uh, an interesting guy so yeah it's kind of weird so it's trump, fascinating guy. so do you think trump actually fired him or it was just kind of like you know what maybe you should just go on the outside i could pretend i fired you but you're still part of the club no idea. No idea. He could have been squeezed out in a power move that involved Trump and other people. You know, they did have um, Kelly come in, the general. <clears throat> he said he's going to be the chief of staff. So when you get a chief of staff coming in, you're going to inevitably have some changes. And we saw that with, uh, with, with the departure of Bruno Mars's dad, Anthony Scaramucci. Yeah, that's right. He was there for like two minutes. Yeah, but he's the easiest one to get rid of. He goes, this guy's a fucking clown. Get rid of him. But with Steve Bannon, it's difficult because no one personifies... The, all of the ideology and, 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 the, uh, and the personality of what got Trump elected more than Steve Bannon and, to a lesser degree, Sebastian Gorka. So with these two guys gone, you have to conclude that the administration has been compromised and it's now basically, it's, 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 MAGA, it's, it's MAGA 
it, it's Magalite. It's Mago on the surface. It says Mago on the tin, but it's not Mago on yeah, the inside. Yeah, it's like three percent alcohol now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you're gonna. Have, it's gonna take a while, while to get us drunk on on Trump. It's gonna take a while to get drunk on Trump from this point on. I yeah, think yeah. that's a great way of putting it. Yeah, I mean, have you had Trump vodka? Trump doesn't even drink. Here's the other thing, right? Trump, right? Trump said, listen, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. He can't even fucking put the tanks on the street to crush Antifa. Right. I mean, no if tanks. I was Trump, I would be fucking crushing Antifa under fucking tanks. Well, that's because you're racist. Well, yeah, exactly. I I'm was a- told to say that, sorry. <laughs> I had some uh, left-wing acquaintances that told me that uh, I'm racist just because of uh, hanging out with you, which we thought would happen, and it has happened. The backlash is, is well it, underway. It's incredible. We did talk about this a little bit last yeah. week. But, uh, yeah, it's, I mean, you know, I, I feel sorry for you to some degree because you, just because you spend time with me and you actually choose to do this with me, then... Uh, you know, you 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 get you get to attract all this sort of attention. Yeah. But the one thing I will say about that is that it's not hard to attract this sort of attention anymore. And it brings us on to a very good point. Do you remember a few a, a few months ago? It was like if you didn't agree with the left and Antifa, you were a xenophobe and a racist. That That's has right. been the stock line for a very long time. After Charlottesville, we saw a dramatic change. Now, if you don't agree, or you just turn up in the street to say, hey, Antifa, I don't agree with you, not only will you be beaten unconscious, but you will be labeled a Nazi. Anybody who does not agree with the CBC, the Justin Trudeau, the Antifa line is now a Nazi. You're a Nazi. And it's ironic that the people, the person who's funding all of these groups was actually a Nazi during the Second World War. You know, it's funny about that whole Antifa. Like, I don't know too much about them other than, like, people's like, you don't like them? I'm like, well, look, they look like bank robbers. What do you robbers. mean? What they, do you mean? People why do they have balaclavas on their face? What, what People say you don't like them. What? I, my question yeah. is, why the fuck do you like them? Well, that's, uh, oh, because, Is this okay with you? Oh, well, the argument is that like them is because they're fighting against hate. And I'm no, like, of course, not. hate of any form is bad, and you want to be like, hey, you know, don't be racist, don't be a bigot. But when you're, like, wearing balaclavas and throwing Molotov cocktails at people... And that's not about I don't love. understand why these are the good guys. Do they look like good guys? I don't know any good guys in the history of, I don't know, movies or history or anything where the good guys are wearing Bella fucking clavas. Exactly. Why are they wearing face masks if they don't want to show who they if are? They're, if, they're not, if, they're, if they're not ashamed of their acts, why are they hiding their face? Why are they all hiding their face? I just don't understand that. Exactly. They look like... Right wingers turn up to meetings and they don't hide their face. I'm not ashamed to say what I think. I, I do it on this. On, I do it on this show. I go to soapbox. I, I share my views there. You know. But these people are quite clearly they're trying to evade the law because they're going to be involved in illegal activity, or they're ashamed and they don't want their mums to see them because they might lose their bedroom in the basement. <laughs> So anyway, on a lighter anyway, note, on a lighter note, so Bannon, so Bannon is no, out. No, no, I want to talk about our sunglasses. Oh yeah, the sunglasses. We're wearing sunglasses. Yeah. You can't see this if you listen to the podcast. No, no, but if you're watching the YouTube version, <laughs> you got- we're trying to get people into the. We're trying to. We're trying to shoot people into the YouTube version by wearing sunglasses and making reference. Is to this it. the first time we drank alcohol on? The no, air? we actually uh, drank wine? alcohol about two episodes ago. It was a, a, a glass each. And were you drinking white wine or red? Yeah, wine? no, we were drinking red, and we talked right. about Captain Charlie and the That's buffet right. of white wine and uh, tapas that you provided for him. Yeah, it was a very metrosexual right wing uh, fucking episode. I, it, it, it was. It was more. <laughs> met, it was. It was more homosexual than anything else. It was pretty. Pretty. Yeah, pretty gay. But the um, yeah, yeah then, go we're on. drinking beer back to man shit. But the glasses are a bit kind of gay. Well, these glasses they look kind of. You got these glasses. These Roger Stone specials. Yeah, these are my son's glasses. I you know one thing that I do is I always buy ladies' sunglasses, and if I want to make a statement, I always wear children's sunglasses. But now because you look, they're too small for your fucking head. But now you look, you look like some sort of 1950s closet case gangster. Well, fair enough. 1950s I mean, that's not Miami with. gay gangster. I don't know. So Steve Bannon's and out of the are White just House. Something I found in the garbage. I don't even remember where I got these. So one of the one of the most astute uh, observations on Steve Bannon's departure from the White House was made by Ben Shapiro, and Ben Shapiro was the one that coined the phrase "Steve Bannon is now a White Walker." So if everybody's familiar with the Game of Thrones um, character, the White Walkers who are coming over the wall and they just decimate and later waste everything before them. They're like Stealing the anti souls and fantasy? bodies alike. Are they the anti for fantasy? No, he's saying that basically Steve Bannon is going to turn into a white walker. I mean, he's the angel of death now. He's outside of the White House. He doesn't have to worry about what people think anymore. Right. He's got his hands <laughs> back on his guns in his own words. That means he can go back to Breitbart and he can start making a difference. The other thing that is worth mentioning at this stage is they're also floating the idea of a Breitbart TV. Oh, now, really? For all of the people on the left, this is going to be an abhorrent idea because he's looking to fill the niche that exists to the right of Fox News. 
<laughs> oh, really? Yes. Do you think Breitbart TV would be like, now another episode of Will and Grace on no, Breitbart TV? No, they'll, they'll be like running reruns of Dukes of Hazard. Just Dukes of Hazard all day, <laughs> yeah, right? Dukes of Hazard all day. It'll be like bass fishing in Dukes of Hazard. Yeah, it's like <laughs> back in the day when you know, when in the in the late seventies, early eighties, you could get Dukes of Hazard lunchboxes. Now, racist. Fascist! Now it'll just be like highlight reels of Steve. Hate crime. Just highlight reels of Steve McQueen slapping women. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Cagney smacking someone around him yeah. black and white. Yeah, you see, Meh. I'll smack you lefties around. Meh. Yeah, so, but, but um, I just speaking of uh, Steve Bannon, I just this is the weirdest thing. I had the weirdest, most vivid dream of Steve Bannon. Yeah. Now Steve Bannon was a scary person in my dream, and I don't know where. So this you comes was from. asleep. You was like I was asleep. in bed. It was right after he got fired, and I guess I was hearing you talk about you know Bannon, Bannon, Steve Bannon, Steve Bannon. Right. Whatever. So I had it in my subconscious, Steve Bannon. But it was so weird because Steve Bannon in my dream, for some reason, he was um, he was like this really scary man, but he also happened to be the coach of the Florida Panthers <laughs> hockey team, and he had a long ZZ Top beard. Oh, I love it! I and, love it already. This dream's brilliant. And he was wearing a pork by hat. Oh, I fucking love. He was this wearing, dream. but it was exactly the same hat as like Heisenberg in uh, you know uh, Breaking Bad. Oh, I, so this dream's amazing. Can I? Can, can you? Can you? Can you send me this dream? Yeah. So, so I can. I can have it. And no, but yeah. So then, and then, and then he was like talking. One of the players and the captain of the team, I think they were. He was like talking to him, and the captain of the team looked petrified. Like you better do As you what should. you better do. What Coach Bannon tells you that yeah. like, he looks like this angry fucking gangster, fucking jazz musician. You know what? That's not a bad idea. The idea that Steve Bannon would leave the White House and go straight into coaching basketball or hockey teams. Yeah, yeah. So he's the coach, and, and I was even scared. Look at and oh, this is my, so they were playing the Canucks, and it was tied one one going into. Of course overtime. they were. And it was tied 1-1 going overtime. And I was scared about the result, and I was really scared just looking at Steve Bannon because he was the coach of the other team. And I'm like, shit's going Oh, you were, coach, you were the coach of the Canucks? No, no, I was just watching. All right. I was watching live. This is, and, th that dream would have been even better. Yeah, I wasn't the coach. I was just an armchair fan. But I think I had sports on my mind because of the big fight, and I had Steve Bannon on my mind. And it just all, but then I just I just was like, what does this mean? What does the dream mean? And, and our mutual friend said, I think it means – that your hockey season's coming up and you're dealing with your your closet case uh, of un, unaddressed uh, latent conservatism. Oh, that's a brilliant answer. But you know, know my what only question is... What does is, it mean? Did, what does it mean? I, I, my only question... You, you, I can tell you more if you just answer this simple question. Did you wake up with cum in your underpants? <laughs> Well, I was reading that copy of <laughs> Rolling Stone of Justin Trudeau, and I passed out. Chantilly out. Lace. Yeah, Chantilly Lace. <laughs> Did you have a stack of Chantilly Lace with <laughs> Sophie Trudeau on the yeah, phone? Yeah, yeah. That's Chantilly outrageous. I'm going, to start get, I'm going to start getting a load of back issues of, sta of, of Sophie Trudeau. You know, the only, the only time I think of Chantel magazine is thinking anxiously, waiting in the doctor's office when I got a blood test for fucking HIV, even though I had, like, no fucking you, risk. You're the king of that. Yeah, I was like, why am I getting checked out? I was just being a hypochondriac. Do you remember, I, well, I don't know if we talked about this on the show before, but you actually, I, I, we were running a comedy room together in Yaletown, and I came up here, here to collect you one day, and I said, Byron, we've got to go, right? We've got to be there at 7.30. <laughs> collect these are the good and you word. went, oh, I can't, I can't do it. And I went, why not? He goes, I, I, I found this lump in my groin. I think it's cancer. I've made an appointment at the doctor's. And I went, where is it? He goes, it's like halfway between my dick and we're at the top of my groin. And I went, that's your fucking lymph node. Okay, cancel the appointment. We're going to the show. <laughs> Did I do it? Yeah, you just came with me. Oh, right. You didn't bother going in the end. Right. And then what happened later? You didn't die of cancer. I, I guess I did. I'm still here. So you're all right. You're still here. Your lymph nodes are functioning. Yeah, yeah. It's your lymph node. <laughs> you know, I know you're a bit of a teddy bear, but yeah. if you've been working out, you should be able to find your lymph node yeah, in your yeah. groin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, on that note, we, should, we, should we go to the fucking news? Yeah, let's go to the fucking news. This is the fucking news. All right, go, go. In five, four. I can't do it. Okay, in the fucking news this week, Byron. You're going to love these stories. These stories are gold. Yeah, yeah. Well, first of all, you may notice our beer has just got magically bigger. But it's all right. We're not dealing with continuity. This is not a period drama yeah. being directed by Tim Burton. So we don't have to worry about but it. But there will always be some asshole watching me like, hmm, I couldn't help notice. I was watching your whole thing. I wasn't listening to anything. I was just there to judge, and I noticed the continuity is off because your beer is topped up. Hmm, it's because we're fascists. Back. Yeah. It's because we're fascists. That's basically <laughs> it. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, we, <coughs> what, we, we used to be uh, fascists. Now we're Nazis. Right. I, I mean, we have no bearing on this. We don't, anything that we do has no bearing on it. We go from xenophobes to racists to fascists to Nazis. Yeah, yeah, Nazi. Everybody's a Nazi. It's... Everybody's a Nazi nowadays. If you're not anti fi you're a Nazi. Anyway. Oh, it's so easy to be a Nazi. It's so now. easy to be a Nazi membership. nowadays. You don't so, have to. So... Membership is soaring, and people don't even have to sign up for it. No, you now they're so open. You could be like a gay Jewish guy who has sex with a black man, still a Nazi. Exactly. It's unbelievable. Like the, the, the registration, they make it so simple now. So this story that I've got for you uh, is a great one. ESPN, 
the sports network have a commentator whose name is Robert Lee. He's a Chinese gentleman. Yeah, yeah. And so Robert E. Lee. <laughs> yeah, Robert E. Lee, right. Yeah, yeah. So basically, he's, <laughs> they got a picture of this guy. And, uh, <laughs> General Robert E. Lee. He looks nothing like General Robert really E. Lee. Kung Fu Chicken, Absolutely yeah. no, nothing like him. But he shares the same name. And so ESPN said, hang on a minute, that's a problem. But they didn't actually admit to this. But this is obviously the internal thought process that went on in their fucking tiny rodentine brains. And they went, hang on a minute, this is a problem. We better pull him because he's going to be announcing a Charlottesville game against mm -hmm. another college time you know it wasn't even a big game right and so they said listen Robert we think it's a really good idea if you don't do that one you do another one so they pulled this fucking guy off his job just because he shared the same name as a confederate general well I mean how fucking I mean really is this where we are now well I guess I, I mean it's stupid that people are like I'm offended because I'm just thinking about the other guy well, it's yeah. like well that guy Lee's like one of the most common Chinese names ever you know, so now Good all of a point. sudden you're 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 I was gonna gonna throw him under the bus because there used to be a racist general. Give me a break. No, that I is mean, I'm, I'm gonna take issue with that. We don't know that Robert E. Lee was a racist. Well, he probably was. Come on. Right. Yeah. Okay. So you could say basically probably everybody in that era was a racist. Oh then. well, of course, probably. Yeah. So probably most of the people on the on the on the northern side were racist as well. Right. Do you think right. black soldiers were treated really well and equally in the northern army? Uh, probably no. 10 percent better. Uh, no, still like 10%. shit. Percent, still is, like shit. Now, yeah, just, uh, ten percent is a. I mean, this is speculation, pure speculation. They weren't we shot; know. they were just flogged. <laughs> so anyway, they either way, them. yes, it was, it was. And and the day later, they issued this uh, this kind of well, it's an explanation, not an apology, but an explanation. And they were saying, "Listen, we wanted to give Robert another job. This was nothing to do with him sharing the same name as this dead Confederate general, and you know, commentating on a Charlottesville game." Uh, where we just had the protests and the deaths. But uh, we just wanted him to do a game that was closer to his house so that he'd be able to get back to his wife and kids in good time that night. Oh, good time. I, I, they were worried about his time. Yeah, I, I've never heard <laughs> anything more ridiculous. Yeah. It, well, I have, but not recently. Well, I have. Anyway, Tucker Carlson said it was the biggest lie he'd ever heard, most outrageous lie he'd heard in a long time. The, the, well, that, that's a, the thing that offends me the most is just the, the shitty spin. I'm like, come on, you could have came up with a better lie than that. So anyway, they then realized that what could have been a 24-hour news story of minor significance is now a major fucking deal and even we're talking about it and if we're talking about it Tucker Carlson's been talking about it everybody's been talking about it now ESPN or as they're being called now MS ESPN right uh, you know it's uh, basically you know the argument is that ESPN is is, is, is a liberal um, is a liberal propaganda outlet but they use sports as a vehicle they're quite clearly being involved in politics and they've been involved in politics for a while they're no different from msnbc they're no different from cnn they just they're, they're, they're yeah they do a lot of sports they're is 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 sports and they they're the biggest sports network in the world so what they is? have a lot of power and yes ESPN. espn yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So they pulled him that, that's but that be i don't know be like a white guy with any mouse hey tongue commenting on a ping pong match might be you know <laughs> might be in china you know, they might just be like, oh, he had to get to Shanghai early. We moved him from Beijing. I don't know. <laughs> Can you imagine there's a, there's a white commentator called Mao Zedong. Yeah. Right? And they pulled him off a Shanghai versus Kunming game. Yeah, Kunming game. <laughs> <laughs> He couldn't do it. He had a he, he had a, he had a he had a flight booked to Chengdu <laughs> early early in the morning, and we didn't want him to be away from his wife and kids any longer. <clears throat> yeah, there was just some guy, some guy named Doug Hitler, fucking you know, <laughs> at the at the end of the Second World War. He's like, dude, I'm coming to the soccer match between Nuremberg and Dresden. And like bad time to have a last name Hitler. Maybe we could do this elsewhere. No, dude. <laughs> Doug Hitler commentating <laughs> the Nuremberg and Dresden game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's people in Portland right now pissing <laughs> blood whilst listening to this. Speaking of which, a guy from Portland, some performer, I was telling you no about. No shit. Got, yeah, he got, got all angry at me because someone, of shit that you said. Oh, that's outrageous. So someone from Portland who is left-leaning got, uh, got upset about stuff that we do. He got I mad said. at me because of your thought, your love of I George love Soros. Because I, I my love of George Soros. Yeah. George Soros is an out-and-out out out Nazi, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Nobody's and, just like, George Soros didn't do the anti- You're wrong, you're wrong. I'm like, first of all, you're quoting somebody else. Doesn't matter, you didn't challenge him on it. By the way, you're homophobic. I'm like, what? Well, your show's homophobic. Yeah, my street show's homophobic. Why is that? Oh, because I get gay guy. I get guys to like pretend to kiss. Well, that's not homophobic. No. That's encouraging gay rights. Yeah, I don't know. Whatever. Well, how, how, how's it homophobic? But, you know, encouraging it, gays it, to guys to kiss. Well, because you need an uptight straight guy to be offended on behalf of gay people that think it's funny. This is the thing that gets me about like white people who are like you know cry racism all the time. 
One, I, I, I'm pretty damn sure that they're if middle class liberals, that they don't have a great wealth of experience uh, at the business end of racism. Right. So it's all theoretical. Uh, you know, I also know that they study this sort of shit at college. So then when they turn around to other white people and other people, actually, and we've got another story that plays into this, other people and say, hey, you're being racist. And, and they'll say this to people of color, of groups that actually know what racism is. You just think, where the fuck do you guys get off? Where the fuck is your trolley stop, motherfucker? Well, it's about them just trying to feel like they're they're good people. So no, I'm going to go out of my way. them imposing their fucking will on everybody. Yeah, but their will is, is just being imposed by their personal insecurity of, I want to be so I want to be thought of so hard to not be thought of as prejudiced or racist or sexist or homophobic that I'm just going to be intolerant to everybody because I'm so open-minded. You know, it's funny. Now it gets to this point where it's just like, what do you do for a living? I'm not racist. I'm like, that's oh, your that's job. Nice. That's my job. How much do you get paid? Yeah. And how much does George Soros pay you for yeah, not being whatever. racist? <laughs> All fucking day. Yeah. Sat in your mum's basement with your fucking dick in your hand, not being racist, getting yeah. paid by George Soros. Cashing that fucking check. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's just like, oh, fuck. Motherfuckers. I don't know. I'm going to march in front of City Hall to protest what fucking racist bike lanes? What am I going to do? It, it, it's, and this is, I mean, you know, this is a crossover point between the left, the, 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 the militant left and Antifa, and there's definitely a crossover point. Right. It's getting to the stage now, and I'm, I'm, I'm reading the news, and I'm, I'm following the feeds on Facebook and uh, Twitter, and it's getting to the stage now. I have to be honest with you. I, you know, once the, light go, once the lights go off in America, and I mean, there's a, when I say the lights go off, what I mean is there's a major catastrophe, like the lights go out. Right. There's no more power. Or there's, you know, it, there's a breakdown of society to some degree. I have to say, these guys are fucking dead. I mean, their life expectancy is that is a ro of a rodent. In fact, a rodent's got better life expectancy than Antifa <laughs> in a post-apocalyptic situation. I don't know. You know what? They know how to use computers better. Well, yeah, but, you They're know. better with Twitter, man. As we say, you know, one side's got eight trillion bullets. The other side doesn't even know what fucking bathroom to use. <laughs> Okay, so I've got another story for you this week. Yeah, you know, yeah. Oh, oh, don't oh, don't shit. fuck with the king. Oh my god, do you know how the king fucking actually secretly drinks? <laughs> <laughs> Shh, <laughs> don't the tell king anybody. To hide our beers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so basically, um, this this story you're gonna love. This story. This story is fantastic. It's right up your alley, or yeah, rectum, yeah. should I say? Right, right, right. Because this story is rectum all about is the new alley. <laughs> it's all this story is all about the Emmanuel Macron, the new president of France. That sounds like a really nice pasta dish. Yeah, Emmanuel Macron. It sounds like something really disgusting that can happen to you in South America. <laughs> <laughs> Right. So anyway, Emmanuel Macron, the new president of France. I got Emmanuel Macron, man. Oh, I don't feel good. I wish he was French Canadian. Yeah. I mean, um, what the new president of France. He has spent twenty six thousand euros on makeup since he took office three months ago. That's like Celine Dion fucking makeup. I, I'm cash. not making this shit up. What what kind of a man, grown man, needs that much makeup? That, well, he's the only other person I can think of who might do such a thing would be Justin Trudeau. Right. Justin Trudeau probably keeps his makeup budget secret. Right. You know, it's like his bum dusting budget. That's probably quite <laughs> his secret. Bum dusting budget. <laughs> <You know>. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> well, what if Justin Trudeau is actually an old Korean woman? <laughs> what if Justin Trudeau and Emmanuel Macron have more in common than we, we previously thought? Well, they, they're, yeah. There's... Not only are they globalist errand boys, but they're also globalist fucking body boys. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny. He's, he's 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 obviously a beard. I mean, Macron definitely. Uh, if there's any Macron's politician, Macron's a beard. If there's any uh, politician that you think is definitely a closet case, it's got to yeah. be him. You think Trudeau, of course. I, I no, I I think Trudeau's more an ideological gay man. But but Macron's definitely. I, I mean, he's, he's 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 married to somebody who's old enough to look like a man. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's old enough to somebody who's actually like could be his mother. Yeah, because he actually, you know, he, he was 16 or something when he got together with her. She was a fucking drama te teacher. Yeah, yeah. And she was like a fully grown woman at the time. I had a crush on my drama teacher when I was when I was. Yeah, a but teenager. he didn't marry her and then become president of France. No, but I did go to the I did go to like I did go to the washroom and just like jerk off with things. Yeah, who doesn't do that? Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, but I didn't marry her and become a globalist fucking uh, leader of a, a state. I had a I had a crush on my geography <laughs> teacher and all my English teacher. My English teacher was her name's Miss Nobler. I mean, she's probably Miss Nobler. I love that. Miss Nobler. Oh, she's probably fucking okay. dead by now, but I had some vicious fantasies about her. Yeah. And she came around to a party at my mum's <laughs> house one day, and it was in the late mid 70s, actually. And she like brought around an avocado because that was exotic at the time. Oh, well, yeah. I brought you an avocado. And it's only nowadays I think of that as quite a poncy thing to do. Right. What a twat bringing an avocado to a But there's something kind of sexual about that, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, there is. Yeah, just like, it doesn't make yeah. you, I don't know. Yeah. 
Anyway, she got married while yeah. I was in the throes of having this fantasy about her. She got married. What a bitch. But I did have another teacher, um, and she was a geography teacher, and uh, man, was she fucking hot. And this was the 70s, so all the ladies wore knee-high fucking high heel boots. Oh, yeah. Yes. Exactly. It's like, like hooker boots before hookers took them over? Exactly. Nice. Exactly, when it was totally acceptable. Yeah. Anyway, oh, we're getting off track. Anyway, we're getting off track. Uh, Emmanuel Mac- Macron. Mac- yeah, back to fucking jizz cake fucking... <laughs> jizz cake. Yeah, on fucking Macron's I mean, face. I, can't, I, can't, I don't know whether he's more of a closet case or whether he's actually more of a globalist fucking jelly boy. Well, I don't know if he's like flaming gay or just French. He's just, he's just French. He's like, you know, I'm sure that in his younger years, uh, Francois Holland would have engaged in exactly the same sort of shit. Well, no, somebody told me the defense was just like, yeah, but but Francois Holland spent more on makeup than him. No, he didn't. Somebody said that no, his he, budget was like... Uh, yeah, who told 10, you that? That 10, fucking Antifa euros. person from Portland. So probably. That fucking Antifa no, po- person remember, from Portland. Remember, he's got all the answers. He's going, no, that's not true. George Soros doesn't spend any money on makeup. George Soros only... George, no, Emmanuel Macron doesn't spend any money on makeup. Francois Holland spent more money than him <laughs> George W. Bush spent more money on makeup than both of them I just, that's a fact your friend's wrong that's a fact but that's funny he's like I need to spend 30,000 euros on makeup he's a fucking ponce why the fuck that, that's like some sort of like that's like uh, what is it like baroque fucking period shit no let's get down to the what figures what does he need a powder soul to wear a wig and go oh damn, listen you know I'm what lady. getting away with spending that much in the 17th century I understand yeah right people had to hide the pox they had to fucking mask their rotting mouths yeah. and the mice living in their wigs. I understand all this shit, yeah. right? But as a modern politician, I mean, you know, you can go to fucking Clinique or, or you can go to, you know, you, you can spend like $20. Right? I mean, there's one thing. Twenty-six thousand fucking dollars, and he's a man. And he's a man. He doesn't. What do we don't wear lipstick? You don't wear fucking mascara. You don't wear fucking eyeliner. What are you spending? What are you on? fucking? What are you buying? Cock polish. Just fucking caviar. <laughs> are you just spending on caviar cock polish? <laughs> cock polish. What are you doing? It's rare exotic Iranian cock polish. Yeah, <laughs> Iranian <laughs> cock polish. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> Justin Trudeau's emailing him going, can you give me the link for that fucking Iranian cock polish? Because, because I need to. <laughs> Justin, you want some Iranian cock polish? I'll Manov's give you the secret get, recipe. My nub's getting a bit sore from having it fucking wanked off by men into a little cup so my wife can get pregnant. <laughs> I hope lefties are offended by this. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. And the ship you sailed in, in you cunt. <laughs> it's your radio cock palace. I just want to say, we're not even drunk. This is our, like, one and a half beers, you know. This, uh, yeah, fuck, you should give Gerard Depot do some of that fucking <laughs> makeup. Jesus. He should put on his fucking face. God damn it, Gerard needs it more than you do, fucking... Macron. Oh, it's terrible. Yeah, you don't it's look terrible. ugly. You just look like a fucking twat. Give it he's, to fucking Gerard. He looks like sort of like somebody from the 18th century's foot that has gout, but it's actually, unfortunately, his head. <laughs> <laughs> so but he but like, if he was like extreme right wing, I bet you'd be like, he's a very handsome man. I'm not. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I'd be like going, yeah, he's a bit. Of, that's a bit of a surprise. He's a bit. Of, it's like finding out that Floyd Mayweather is a big Trump fan. Oh yeah, that's like, right. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about that. Well, that's because he smacked bitches around you. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, you know I like Trump? He smacks bitches around you. Hello, smacking bitches. I love you, Floyd. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, let's go to This Week in History. This Week in History. This Week in History. Yeah. Okay, Byron. So what have you got for us This Week in History? Well, tomorrow, 20 years to the day, uh, <sighs> Princess Diana. Yeah, bad day. Bad day for Diana. Princess Diana, what Princess happened to Diana. her? Oh, I don't know. She entered a tunnel and she never came out. Yeah, something like that. She was killed by the SAS. Yeah. Do you think she was murdered? Yeah, for having an hour baby inside her. You think, do you think she was pregnant then? Yeah, I think she was pregnant. I think the SAS killed her because I think Prince Philip went, you know what? Fuck this shit. I'm pulling the plug. Right, right. Now, this whole story... I, I'm being a bit flippant here, but I do think... Listen, come on. This is. I mean, if we go back 300 years, this stuff happened... Like that all right. the time, right? All of a sudden, we, we fast forward this into the modern age, and we say, oh, "Wait a minute, this doesn't happen anymore in this whole world." But how did they plan the day? De- because oh, there was there was rumors that the driver was totally fucking hammered. Yeah, right. but he didn't look hammered when he's walking in there. And you know, the other thing is that basically that driver was ex-military service. He was ex ex paratrooper. He was the only one to survive. I do believe he probably had a visit and said, "Listen, this is the way this is going to fucking go down." You don't, if you say anything about this, we'll fucking finish the job. Right. And he understands better than anybody what that means and how it plays out. I think that there was there was a 
Fiat Panda that they never found that was in the tunnel at the time. I think the people who were involved in that, and you actually have some people coming out now saying I was involved in putting that team together. A Fiat Panda. What is a Fiat Panda? Fiat Panda is a car. Oh, like okay, a Fiat right. car, but it's a name's Panda. And right. It's a small, very, very small, like a Mini. It's like an Italian Mini. Right. And they never found that car that supposedly her car hit. Oh, really? At 90 miles an hour. Right. In the tunnel. So, uh, you know, the, 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 the more conspiratorial way of looking at it is that it, she hit a car. There was a flash. There's supposedly a flash of a, a very, very loud, a bright flash that put the driver off. And they finished the job and they killed them. How it's, did they, what, how did they kill them? With, with some, well, they inject them with something. Oh, right. Once they're in there. And yeah, they kill yeah. them, right? Right. And so you, then, believe, you believe that then? You, you believe it's... Yeah, it's well, I, I mean, okay, so I'll, give, I'll, I'll put this in some sort of context. When Diana was, having, was fucking James Hewitt, right. the cavalry commander. Right, the, the father uh, of... Uh, the father of Harry. Do you think he is a father? I do believe he is, yeah. Yeah, right. When, when, they, when she was fucking him, right. they had a team of Royal Marines that were holed up. This is, this is accepted fact. This is not fucking conspiracy theory. This is accepted fact. There was holed up a team of five or six Marines that took it in turn to, to hold up in his large, expansive gardens. Yeah, yeah. They had a nest there where they, where they observed them for a prolonged period. They watched them having sex on a bench in the garden. Jesus, there was, a, there was actually a, a, a reconnaissance surveillance team in the garden, embedded, oh, really? twenty-four hours a day for a week or so. When she was banging uh, Hugh. Yep, absolutely. Right, right. So if we put, if we take that a known fact into context, that was when that was when she was still with Prince Charles, right? Yeah, exactly. Right, but that gives you some indications to the level that they're willing to go to straight from the get-go when she's involved with other people. Oh, absolutely. I'm, but I remember before she died, like it was a constant, every day it was just like, Prince Diana, Prince Diana, Prince Diana bought sweets today. Scandal, well, and the scandal. the loved her. Prince Diana took a shit. Oh, dear. Prince and, Diana, Prince and Diana. And she was getting bigger than the royal family. You've got to remember that she was bigger than the royal yeah. family. And once you get bigger than the royal family, then you start to have this nicely patterned sort of target sign on your back. Right. Because you're actually, you know, you, you're outside of the royal fold. You've been inside, you're outside now. And then, yeah, yeah, you're legit to my target. Come on. She was, she was the most famous woman in the world, right? And then she starts fucking this Pakistani heart surgeon. Right. And then she's, and then, and then she's fucking Dodie Fayed. Dodie fucking Fayed's dad owns Fulham Football Club and Harrods. Yeah. I mean, you know, it, it, and, and he's a Muslim. What, you think we're having a fucking half Muslim baby as the, as the next king of England? Right, right. No, I don't think that's fucking happening. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, he that we, he would he'd be like third in line. I know, right? I know. I'm being, I, but you know what? Right. You think that's a distinct possibility? Right. You think that's they're going to let that happen? Right. So you think you think? Uh, do you know? What I think did it. Who's that? Osama bin Laden. I think George Soros did it. Do you think George Soros? No, did it? I don't. I'm I just don't saying know. that. If we get a title Osama bin Laden. Together. I think I think uh, it's the sort of thing that George uh, d that Steve Bannon might come up with. Yeah. You don't think like Princess Diana killed. Uh, Killed Kennedy and then Osama bin Laden <laughs> fucking finished Elvis. No, I don't. You don't think, think Elvis is no, still alive hanging out with Princess? No, Diana. I don't think that, that. I think that Joseph Mengele survived because they found his he found his body in South America. Right, right. Well, he died. He died during a swimming accident in Argentina. Right. In the 1970s. But I think all of the other shit, Elvis, Adolf Hitler, Jim Morrison, Princess Diana, they're not all living together in a idyllic sort of like landscape in, a, in, in a bunker, bunker underneath the White House. No, 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 right. no, because everybody knows that hanging out with the Rothschilds. Everybody knows that um, that Barack Obama put in a basketball court. <laughs> <laughs> were you sad when Diana died? I was a little bit. I remember getting up. Everybody remembers where they were when Diana died. Yeah. I was living in. A, I was in a relationship with this woman at the time, and uh, I, I don't know why I mentioned that. Anyway, I got up in the morning, t and I, I thought I'll go get the papers and some groceries. I went out to the uh, to the shop, I, and you see the stand, and it's like fuck. Oh, so you found out on the newspaper? Yeah, I went uh, out to the shop. You didn't find out on TV, like no, somebody no, no, just no, telling you that. No, no, no. This is pre-internet, right? Yeah. Well, internet so, was happening, but it was still. Yeah, but only for posh people, mm. you know, and lefties. It was posh so, internet. It was. Exactly. That's the noise you're so accustomed. Yeah, to. that was the 1997 internet sound. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I went out to the shops and I, I, I read the newspaper. I was like, "Fuck!" And I went back. I woke up my girlfriend. I went, you're never going to believe this. She went, what? I went, Princess fucking Diana's dead. She went, no shit. I went, yes, shit. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And, then, and then supposedly, you know, then we had to wait a week. And then we had the funeral procession of Princess Diana. Yeah. Candle in the wind. 
Elton John getting a blowjob off his fucking Canadian boyfriend in the, <laughs> in the back room of uh, Westminster Abbey. Right. That's that's one of the conspiracy theories. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. That he was getting blown during the Before wedding? Before he did his... Yeah, come on, if you're a gay guy, right, and you're going, this is a fucking monumental... Exp- this is a monumental event. What's the most tawdry... Outrageous thing you can do. Outrageous thing I can do right now is get a blowjob in the waiting room before I go on and do Candle in the Wind. Yeah. Do you think, well, so that, that actually, that's a wonderful conspiracy. That is a pretty good and benign yeah. conspiracy, isn't it? Because yeah, no one gets hurt in that conspiracy. No, no, it's, it's a victimless crime. <laughs> it is right? essentially. Yeah, yeah, it's a victimless crime. It's just like, Jesus Christ, I don't know, just getting... Yeah, just go get, on, yeah. go on, come on. Canadian yeah. boy, let me come in your mouth. Yeah, totally. Oh, I've got to do candle in the wind now. It's like that time that uh, you know LBG LBJ stroked me off right before <laughs> Kennedy's funeral. <laughs> oh man, that was exciting. Oh, that I'm not a- gay, but oh, how could you resist such an offer? LBJ, how many kids did he kill today? Yeah, exactly. Well, man. if you count Baron's sperm. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, on that note, ladies and gentlemen, we better wrap this up. It's been a great episode. We've totally enjoyed it. I've been Ivan Penaluna. I'm Byron Bertram. Thank you very much. Good night.